Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, illegal strikers spurn ATS offer. Think of consequences, ATS workers told. And more drivers penalised for breaking road rules. From the studios of FBC Subak, Jackie Spate. Their terminal services employees trust secretary is adamant his members who abandoned their jobs a couple of days ago will not return to work under any conditions. This is following the meeting between ADSET and FASA officials with the ATS board chair yesterday where the workers were welcome back to work if they acknowledged that they had stopped work over the weekend. Felipe Nakaso has more. Into its fourth day and these ATS workers are still not budging despite being welcomed back to work yesterday. We are ready to go to work. We will continue to stand here at the gate and we are asking the chairman who can make the decision on behalf of management to open the gates and allow everyone back at work. He has asked us to sign statements with conditions to admit that we were on strike. We confirm and reiterate that we are not on strike. I think, I think first of all we should establish whether it's the officials who are saying this or is the general staff who are saying this. I think that's very, very important because uh, when I had a meeting uh, with the officials last night, they said they were going to put it to the, um, uh, to the members that uh, everyone signed a statement saying, you know, they made a mistake by abandoning their work and working, walking off their job to attend a meeting and they made a mistake uh, because they were maybe ill-informed, etc. and they will not do it again and uh, they're going to come back to work. Um, they will not get fired if they come back to work and uh, that uh, the management may take some sort of disciplinary action. The ATS chairman says it must be acknowledged that some ATS workers did abandon their positions. See, at the end of the day, uh, they did leave their work. And uh, no company in the world, if its uh, staff leave their work in the, middle of the, in the middle of the job and go away and come back when, whenever they want to come back, will say, look, with open arms, please come back and you know you can start work again. There has to be acknowledgement of the fact that they did abandon their jobs. We have international um, support through the International Transport Federation. We have full support from um, other unions for the cause that we're trying to make. Um, there are issues that are before the court at the moment which I cannot disclose details of and um, you will obviously be hearing about it in due course. The board chairman has also stated that they will stand by the decision of only allowing the workers to resume work if they sign the statement to ensure that workers don't illegally stop work again. He says tonight the only people standing in the way of workers returning to work and resuming normal duties are the worker representative officials themselves. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Meanwhile, Vili Finau has admitted they are getting direction on their action over the last few days by ADSET Chair J. Deer Singh, who resides in Sydney, Australia. Mr. J. D. Singh is the chairman of the trust. Um, you're saying it's been backed. If he's the chairman of the trust, then obviously the um, statements that are being made by the trust represents not only the beneficiaries, but the executives of the trust which includes J.D. Singh. Singh was removed as the ATS board chair recently after he was found to have a conflict of interest because he had applied for the chief executive's position while being the member of the board. The unlawful walkout by air terminal services staff will bring a number of repercussions to the company, which will not only affect the country but the staff, who are shareholders in the company. 
ATS staff illegally walked off their jobs on Saturday to attend a meeting which has resulted in the operations at the airport being manned by the airlines and other staff. Attorney General Ayas Said Kayyum says the staff need to think for themselves and not be misled. If the airline starts looking for alternative service providers, it means that they will require less of ATS services. If a company's services are required in a reduced fashion, then obviously the value of the company will come down. So who will lose out? The shareholders, which includes government and the uh, ad set people, the trustees who hold the shares. So I explained this to you. Meanwhile, services at the Nalsori International Airport have not been affected. The staff at the Nalsori Airport told FBC News that operations are normal, with ground services taken care of by the airline personnel and the port's own employees. Meanwhile, the Employment Minister Chone Osumate has declined to comment on the issue, only saying that negotiations are ongoing. More than 400 Apologies, more than 400 drivers have been issued with traffic tickets for speeding, while 38 have been arrested for drink and drive in the last four days alone. The traffic infringement notices issued and arrests are part of the police festive season safety campaign Operation Yalonde, which started on Friday. Pranita Prakash reports. Police officers are out on the streets to ensure there are no fatalities as few days remain for the year to end. Uh, all our highway, highway vehicles are on the road. We are covering uh, Highway Queen's Road and uh, King's Road. Uh, we, are, we are trying to fully utilize all the, the vehicles that are uh, being given to us and it's uh, under the highway and uh, our traffic department. So if they, they, there should be a change. Director of Traffic, SSP Mahesh Mishra, says despite numerous warnings, drivers continue to break the law. We need your support, we need your assistance as far as uh, road rules is concerned, and we would like to see that our statistics, uh, that we have already lost 66 deaths on our road, we don't want to have any other loss of life, and it is all the responsibility of individual road users, and especially our drivers, to make a right decision. While speeding and drink driving continue to be the two leading causes of accidents, drivers need to be aware that fatigue can be a threat to one's safety as well. Plan your trip, ensure that uh, you know where you are going. You must know the road environment and road conditions that you are entering, and also the speed limit that you need to travel. According to police statistics, 1,088 drivers have been booked for various other traffic offences since Friday. Operation Yalande will continue for a month. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Two people each facing one count of murder have been further remanded by the Suva High Court. It's alleged that on the 30th of last month, 35-year-old Noah Ravanasau and 25-year-old Melavi Tikumai Raratonga assaulted Rusiate Vakalakovi, which resulted in his death. State Council has asked for 21 days to file information in the case. The two allegedly assaulted Vakalakovi after a heated argument broke out between them at a service station in Suva. Following the alleged incident, Vakalakovi was taken to the hospital where he later died. The case will be recalled on the 19th of next month. Still to come, stakeholders recommit to protect oceans. And new Evola Vossa app to preserve Ithalke culture. Stay with us. Bula, Kera my singer talker, Kera do Tali Takanavaro wrong on the radio Fiji one and the boy with you. I have a runner in the day. I have a little talent. The depletion of mangroves, abuse of coral reefs and overfishing was some of the major point of discussions during the Pacific Islands Development Forum Symposium held in Suva this morning. These topics involve commitments made at the SDG 14 Pacific during the Oceans Conference in New York early this year. Sainiani Boyla has more. The ocean is in danger and the Special Envoy for the Ocean says we should act now 
to save for our future generations. A rising sea levels, marine pollution. So the ocean is in deep trouble. So we need SDG 14 to set things right. And if we faithfully implement SDG 14, we will indeed uh, get the ocean back into a healthy state by 2030. PIDF Secretary General Franco Martel says the forum wishes to conclude the year, reminding its members of its 2018 action agenda and commitments to its efforts to preserve our ocean. People from the Pacific, or people who are involved <coughs> in issues related to the ocean in the Pacific, can actually see how they could make some additional commitments. They can look at gaps in where the areas that there's not many commitments and we should focus on. Um, <clears throat> there's not that much engagement of the private sector, for example. There's not much uh, focus on aquaculture. According to Ambassador Thompson, the South Pacific has achieved 21% of its total commitment, with 15% from the North Pacific. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. As the festive rush kicks in, shoppers have been hitting stores and supermarkets in Lombasa looking for good deals just six days before Christmas. Eleanor Rangaivu reports many are working their shopping around a tight budget. It's that time of the year again, a time of festivity and merrymaking, and also shopping, lots and lots of shopping. Lombasa town has been a lot busier than normal the last few days, as preparation for Christmas gathers momentum. Well, my preparation is no, it's very well. I've been preparing just not just for a few weeks. I've been preparing. As our preparation for Christmas, we are doing the lovo and barbecue with our families. From stores to supermarkets and to the markets, the shopping list for most households will be longer than usual this season. On average, a household is spending around three hundred dollars for their Christmas. Our budget for Christmas shopping is around three hundred dollars. And we will be spending on food items and I think uh, some item price have gone up and some it's low and it's affordable. My budget for Christmas is not really much. My budget is about say three to four hundred dollars. I already it depends. Uh, and I think that budget will be enough for my Christmas spending for one day. For many, this Christmas will be a time for family over food, music and the usual round of grog. For others, it's a time to recommit their spiritual life. For this Christmas, I want to celebrate uh, my family with uh, a big lovo. We make a party, kill goat and barbecue, drink beer, enjoy our family. Some of my families from Nakavika, they're visiting us. Christmas Day, we, we, are, we are praying for the goat. And we need to do the help, help the other, 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 poor, other poor, uh, poor people. Many who are out shopping today want to beat the big rush come the weekend with Christmas Day falling on a Monday. And with all this craziness and madness this festive season, let's not forget the true meaning of Christmas. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Understanding the Fijian culture and language will be easier for many now after the launch of the Volavosa app today. The Volavosa app is a soft copy of the Ithauke Dictionary published by the Ithauke Affairs Ministry. Anna Rabulo, who was at the launch, filed this report. The Volavosa app will come handy for all those that speak Ithauke and for those who wish to learn the language. It's important to know that the Volavosa app Ban Marama says the app will also be introduced in schools and tertiary institutions as well. The features of the app is something that will amaze its users. With the app, we have included the sound files of each word explained in the, the app. So every word that you want to find out the meaning of, um, you can hear how it is pronounced. And uh, we've included as well the pictures of uh, fish, plants and animals. Creating the app costs $135,000. It's available for all smartphones and will be available for iPhones next month. Anna Ravulo, FBC News.
In world news, it's feared the death toll of a train derailment in America's Washington state will rise past the three confirmed so far. Around 100 people were injured, some critically. The train was traveling on a new high-speed route when disaster struck. Ahead in sports with Jamie FNRL to meet its CEO to discuss issues tomorrow, but we now join Akusita for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up, electronic physical device pilot test successful. And in growing Fiji, Fiji Airways unveils flagship launch at Nandi International Airport. Stay with us. Leading business tonight, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has made significant progress in the, in the implementation of the VAT monitoring system or electronic fiscal device. This follows another successful live test at the Carpenters Fiji Group Max Value Supermarket in Lamy last week. The FRCS will conduct more live tests as other point-of-sale system suppliers are close to testing the solution in a supermarket and pharmacy. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says the deadline to implement an EFD for those that fall under the first group of businesses is December 31st. Das says they continue to receive requests from affected taxpayers and POS suppliers to extend the deadline, bearing in mind that this is a busy period for them. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Let's have a look at some major economic announcements. The Reserve Bank of Australia has released figures showing an increase in full-time employment and a fall in the unemployment rate to a four-year low. Tomorrow, the U.S. releases its housing starts and building permits data for November. Thursday, they'll release their initial jobless claims for December and third quarter GDP. And Friday, the U.S. releases its core personal expenditure numbers and new home sales for November. Meanwhile, tomorrow, New Zealand releases its November trade balance and third quarter GDP numbers. Later in the week, the Bank of Japan will announce its interest rate decision, which is expected to remain unchanged at minus 0.1%. So some key events to look out for during the week. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Now looking at today's currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar, it rose against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the PNG Kina and the Japanese yen, but dipped slightly against the Aussie dollar and the euro. And as for the commodities market, oil prices fell a few cents to $57.28 a barrel. Gold was up to $1,260 per ounce and silver rose to $16.12 an ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Airways state-of-the-art business class lounge at Nandi International Airport was unveiled last night following 12 months of design and development. The premier lounge is the first of its kind for the region, complete with a number of special features including chef-inspired menus, baristas, a luxury spa, nanny service and the exclusive Fiji bean cut. The premier 200-seat lounge offers a dedicated family area, a quiet zone and a media room which doubles as a private meeting space. The world-class facility also features a business center with a number of charging stations and data ports. Civil Aviation Minister Aya Said Kayum says the national carrier is very critical to the economy and everyone needs to be on the same page. The point of this is that Fiji is capable of delivering such products. The point is that Fiji is capable of delivering even better products. And it can only happen through a vision. It can only happen through collaboration. It can only through, happen through a partnership. And that is very, very critical. And that's business this evening. Now to sports. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Akasita, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, FNRL to field its first ever women's team next year. 
And Fasnac hopes to have earlier access to government funding. This and more coming up. मैं प्रेमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेकी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते The Fiji National Rugby League, uh, League will field a women's team for the first time at the international meet next year. The FNRL is yet to name the team and its officials, but development has begun with trials for the Commonwealth Championship that will be held in Australia next year. Luciana Tangitakimbao reports. The Women's National Rugby League team will be joining the men's under-23 team in the Commonwealth Games early next year. Fiji residents head coach Chosara Mbele says, this has captured the attention of many women who are keen to play in the league. Uh, like it is, it is a big, uh, big thing for Fiji national rugby. Especially, it's a big, uh, it is a big thing. If you can see today, there's a lot of uh, women that are here turn up today, just especially to be try to be part of the, the 15 girls that will be part of the Commonwealth Games in Australia in February 2018. FNRL will soon release the names of the women's team. Rambele adds, this is the first step towards the women league team with many more to come. I think if you, if you can witness that, that this year was our first competition of a women's competition, and now they like try to organize a team for the upcoming Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast. The boys under 23 side also went through a grueling session today. Apakukita Vondi, who was part of the trial, says it will not be an easy ride to make it to the final team. It's going to be a hard, uh, hard one, uh, as uh, every kid here. Uh, hoping to represent uh, Fiji, uh, so it's going to be tough. Rugby League Commonwealth Championship will be held in Brisbane on February 23rd and 24th. Luciana Tangyadekimbao, FBC Sports. After being sent on leave, FNRL CEO Timothy Nalemba will meet with the Fiji National Rugby League Board tomorrow to answer concerns regarding NF FNRL's operations. There are operational issues uh, that we have shared with, uh, with Mr. Nalemba. And again on Wednesday when we meet, uh, we are going to be meeting with him as the CEO. Uh, he has um, maintained uh, you know, the benefits uh, that he had for the last two, two months. So we're going to be clarifying all those issues during uh, our board meeting. Well, Fasunok is grateful for funding provided by government for national teams to compete at international events. It indicates the investment would reap more rewards if it's received ahead of its preparation period. Fasanak Chief Executive Lorraine Ma says it receives a substantial amount from government and if they were able to access, access these funds early to prepare athletes, it could also improve its performance at international competitions. Meli Tawanga has more. In order to be the best in the Pacific, our athletes need financial support on time to compete overseas and learn a high standard of competition. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case at the recent games, as the budget allocation for all the sporting bodies came in late. We appreciate the funding, but it comes a little bit late. You know, that's, the, that's another point that perhaps uh, we could have done better at the Pacific Mini Games had we had the preparation money a lot earlier. Team Fiji chef de mission Wayne O'Connor says our athletes need high-class facilities and substantial time to prepare for any international meet. I know that one particular sport has already come back. They came back in the, after the first week and they went straight home to continue their training because they realized that there is worth in that and they need to be uh, dedicated um, to their particular sport and really committed to achieving the best that they can. Meanwhile, Team Fiji returned from the Vanuatu Pacific Mini Games with 33 gold, 27 silver and 23 bronze medals. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. And we now cross live to Meli Tavanga who is at Team Fiji's Pacific Mini Games Thanksgiving dinner at the Holiday Inn in Suva. Meli. 
Governor Kajemi, Fasunok has invited all Team Fiji contingents at the Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu in a Thanksgiving dinner here at Suva's Holiday Inn. And uh, here with me is uh, Lorraine Ma, the Chief Executive of uh, Fasunok. Uh, Bulevina Kama, uh, uh, overall, uh, how do you rate uh, Team Fiji's performance at the Pacific Mini Games, which has we, uh, ended uh, uh, last uh, weekend? Last weekend. Well, we ended up um, finishing third on the medal tally. We did go with the objective of um, reclaiming that number one spot. And unfortunately, we were not successful, but generally we we're happy with um, coming behind, well, I can't say we're happy, but we came behind uh, New Caledonia and uh, PNG, two very tough teams. So based on their performance, so what do you think that could be done better before the next uh, meet? I think generally our national federations have got to plan well in advance, that's the, f the first thing. And then the second thing is that um, we'd like to encourage the government to give us the team preparation funding a lot earlier. In this case, we, it was coming to us probably about three months uh, before the Games, uh, and that's just not enough time. So, you know, Commonwealth game is just uh, around the corner and, uh, you know, the preparation starts for, from now. Uh, for, can you just uh, tell us uh, how many sports have qualified so far after uh, the Pacific Mini Games? Uh, for the Commonwealth Games, it's generally the team sports that need to qualify. So uh, rugby sevens, men and women were the first uh, to come across the line, and then it was netball. And then at the Pacific Mini Games, I'm very pleased to say that the, both the men's and women's beach volleyball team have qualified. And then uh, you have the individual sports who um, generally don't need to qualify, but then. Fasenok and the National Federation set a minimum criteria, so athletes do need to meet that criteria before they go to the Games. That's all we have from here, Jamie. National football coach Christophe Gomel will soon meet with clubs in Qatar to line up more friendly matches for Fiji football. Gomel says he has worked in Qatar before and has some contacts who can make this possible. He hopes to secure more international games and not only for the Fiji men's team. Sometimes we can make some agreement to, that they can invite uh, Fiji, but also the youth team, men or women, and, uh, part to participate uh, for some tournament, international tournament. Former Fiji Sevens player Wasay Anayadilewu scored a try for Start Francais in its win over London Irish in the European Challenge Cup. The win boosting his club's chances of a successful def defense of the competition. Meanwhile, in round four of the Champions Cup, flying Fijians utility back Kini Murimuribalu's La Rochelle went down to Gabi Lovombalavu's Wasp by 21 points to three. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, French sailor sets new world record sailing solo around the world. Details coming up. Bula, Kera my singer talker, Kera do Tali Takanavaro wrong on the radio Fiji one and the boy Viti. I have an initiative, a combination of the Tali Takana radio Fiji one and the baby. I have got a little talent, the Gurama in our money, Nandoma. We do Teletagan and the Venezuela, Nandu Rongo, Barong and Radio Fiji one, Nandu Mavit. The radio Fiji one, Nandu Mavit in Wonga and BNN. In your media, what is net neutrality? It's the super important internet principle that has such a dull name that most people don't realize how critical it is to their daily lives. This report explains why. Weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. A lovely day to be out and about. We had some decent amount of sunshine to get us rolling. Well, hope your Christmas priming is going well. Taking a look in the west today, the sun was really vibrant. Expect a few showers later tonight. Eastwards from Back Harbour to Suva, it was quite buggy with light showers. And up north, partly cloudy with lots of sunshine. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough sea. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 746 with a low tide at 156. Sunrise will be at 627. For tomorrow, there is forecast of light showers mainly for the eastern division. 
Tomorrow's temps, Nandi and Lambasa will be hot with highs of 31 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, I'm so glad the weather looks all clear. And that's all from the FCC Weather World. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, are you baking or buying cakes this Christmas? Bake a cake, uh, especially an eggless cake. I bake in every Christmas. I bake cakes and pie. Yes, I will bake a Christmas pudding with custard in this Christmas. Oh, definitely, I will bake a cake this Christmas. I'm definitely not going to buy anything because I've got three kids. Baking is my favorite. Recapping the main stories, illegal strikers spurn ATS offer. Think of consequences, ATS workers told, and more drivers penalized for breaking road rules. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should more neighborhood watch zones be set up to counter criminal activities? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day. This picture was taken in Nambitu at the Singatoka Valley Road by Palawish. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Radio Fiji One, and 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 Radio Fiji One, and